Our next speaker will be the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, Dr. the Honorable Kenneth Simmons. Dr. Simmons is no stranger to Jamaica. He's a graduate of the University of the West Indies. He began his political career in 1975, was elected president of the People's Action Movement in 1976, won his first seat in 1979, and took leadership of his party. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite Dr. Kennedy Simmons to address you. Your Excellency, Mr. Edward Zaka, Acting Governor General, Mrs. Zaka, Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Michael Manley, colleague, CARICOM Ministers, Your Excellency, Mr. President, President of the ANC, Brother Nelson Mandela, and Willie Winnie Mandela, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, today is a great and historic day. It is a day of celebration for all of us gathered here in Jamaica. Jamaica, the land of Marcus Garvey, the land of Alexander Bustamante, the land of Norman Manley. Today is a day of triumph for all the freedom-loving people of the entire Caribbean. <clears throat> Today, the people of the Caribbean community welcome with love, respect, and admiration Nelson and Winnie Mandela. I am honored as chairman of CARICOM to express that affectionate welcome on behalf of the community. To Nelson Mandela, I say that your suffering, your deprivation, and sacrificial struggle to free the black majority from the inhumanity of apartheid symbolizes and epitomizes our own struggle from slavery to become what we are today, bastions of democracy across the Caribbean. <clears throat> we will continue to give full support to you and the oppressed people of South Africa until you have won the ultimate victory and can chart your own destiny as a people by the constitutional and democratic process based on one person, one vote. We in the Caribbean will never be satisfied and will never rest until the evil system of apartheid is completely dismantled. We have been in the forefront of the fight against apartheid and in our own way, we have been unrelenting in our support for the freedom fighters of South Africa. We have carried the fight in the United Nations, in the Commonwealth, and in every other forum of opportunity. We have supported the imposition and maintenance of sanctions against the Pretoria regime and have applied sanctions ourselves. Our sanctions in relation to sport, <coughs> in particular, have struck telling and perhaps even crippling blows against apartheid and in support of freedom. As we are the world's greatest exponents of cricket, all must measure their prowess against us 
or not be counted at all. <clears throat> this is a dilemma which has deeply hurt apartheid in the field of sport. And we have maintained our principal stand to the extent of punishing our own who forsook principle for filthy lucre. At the recently concluded CARICOM summit in St. Kitts and Nevis, it was agreed that on the basis of the specific request of the African National Congress, the CARICOM was ready to support the admission of the Non-Racial Cricket Council of South Africa to the International Cricket Conference. And that support for the lifting of sanctions against other sporting bodies could be considered on a case-by-case -case basis and supported only if they were organized and operated on non-racial lines with equal opportunity for all, regardless of race. The Caribbean community maintains its principal stand of continuing sanctions against the regime in South Africa and opposes the wholesale lifting of sanctions at this time. We consider the lifting of sanctions now to be premature and caution that it could result in delaying the inevitable end to apartheid. I call on the international community not to retreat when the end is in sight. I call on the international community not to abandon the oppressed people of South Africa at this critical time, but to stand fast until justice, equality, and freedom become realities for all in South Africa. The people of the Caribbean will continue to support the people of South Africa whose fundamental rights are trampled by the apartheid system. And we urge all parties opposed to this common enemy to seek the road of reconciliation and work together to achieve the ultimate objective of one person, one vote. Democracy and individual rights and freedoms are all part of our Caribbean way of life. We want nothing less for our African brothers and sisters. Near home, the democratic process was exercised in Haiti. Farther afield, it was exercised in Namibia. In each case, the Caribbean community played a leading role. South Africa must surely be next. And we are prepared to assist in whatever way it is considered we can be helpful. As a community, we are prepared to structure a program of technical and human resource assistance as a demonstration of practical cooperation to strengthen the anti-apartheid movement and to hasten the establishment of a free, united, non-racial and democratic South Africa. Nelson Mandela, we see you and we salute you as a symbol. We greet you and cheer you on as a champion. We hail you and honor you as a hero. Long live Nelson Mandela. Long live the ANC. Long live all the freedom-loving people of South Africa. The message we send is clear 
and unequivocal. The support of the Caribbean community is unabated and unflinching. Our solidarity is unwavering and will continue until apartheid is ended. And one person, one vote becomes a reality in South Africa. I'd like to thank the Honourable Prime Minister.